Shalom, shalom. I am your friendly neighborhood brew, Bon Shemayim, back with another one. So, today's video, we are talking about these exploding pagers that happened, right? In Lebanon. That is believed Israel did, right? You know, 28,000 were hurt in this attack, or I think it's more than that now, like 29,000. I believe nine people were dead. Um, it's crazy because they somehow blew up these pagers and um or triggered them to explode there's all type of theories that maybe they got their hands on them and they put uh bombs inside of them and i, I want y'all to hear the all these theories there even another theory that says that they sent some type of uh wavelength some type of link that distorted the communicator and made the battery overheat and uh overcharge or something like that which made the batteries blow up either way it's important to peep this because this could be the next the evolution of warfare every a lot of people in america you know we have uh things like that in america we have our our cell phones our computers our different things and all of these devices require a battery inside or something to operate them. And with that being noted, if this was some type of code that was sent to the battery to trigger an explosion, any one of us, if this was some type of computer hack, which I have heard that that is a possibility, they really don't know what it is. But if that was the case, all of us could be in danger. We pretty much walking around with bombs on this. So on that note, I'm going to let y'all listen to this video and then at the end I'm going to come back with a couple of scriptures to kind of talk about what I think this is leading to biblically. Focus on the man in the checked shirt. In a moment he's on the floor, wounded in the midriff. A pager in his bag or on his belt has exploded. CCTV from another shop shows a man check his pager before it too blows up at his side. Scenes like this playing out hundreds of times across Lebanon within the space of an hour. A targeted, coordinated, highly technical attack. These pagers exploded while people were on the road uh, going about their daily lives, basically, in, uh, in supermarkets and hospitals, uh, driving their cars, getting their kids from school. So it's, uh, it's quite, it's a huge blow. Hezbollah had reportedly switched communications from cell phones to pages to bypass Israeli infiltration attempts. The Reuters news agency, citing security sources, reported the targeted pages had been supplied just in the last three months. The scale of the assault evident at hospitals around the country. Appeals made for blood donors to come forward. Nearly 3,000 people reported injured, including Hezbollah fighters and medics, and according to Iranian media, Iran's ambassador to Lebanon. Israel is clearly pushing the boundaries and seeing how far it can get away with. The message to Israel so far has been from the international community mm. uh, writ large has been you can get away with a lot. Uh, 40, 41,000 people dead in Gaza and the war continues. Israel hasn't confirmed or denied responsibility, but few are genuinely asking whether Israel did it. The more salient question, why now? Why unveil the extent of its penetration of Hezbollah's communications network? One theory, preparation for a large-scale conventional attack. For days, rumors have swirled that Israel was on the verge of escalating its months-long conflict with Hezbollah. Last night, its security cabinet made the return of more than 60,000 evacuated civilians to their homes in Israel's north, an official war goal. The Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is also reported to be ready to replace his defence minister, Yoav Gallant, with someone less cautious about expanding the war. Even Gallant, though, was yesterday resisting US pressure to de-escalate. Some Israeli analysis points to what Israel said was a preemptive attack on Hezbollah missile launch sites last month as having reassured Netanyahu about the likely cost in Israeli civilian lives of an escalation. Another theory that the pager attacks were a reprisal. Israel's internal security agency today said it had thwarted a Hezbollah plan to assassinate a former senior Israeli security official. This evening, Hezbollah put out a statement on its TV station blaming Israel for the attacks and saying it would receive fair punishment in turn.
Hamza Attar is a defense and intelligence researcher. You're joining us from Luxembourg. It's great to talk to you again. So Israel was able to weaponize Hezbollah's own communications devices, their pagers. Do you have a working theory on how they would have been able to do that? Well, there are three possibilities for this. Uh, the first, that Israel managed to intercept the um, the cargo itself, and they managed to uh, fiddle with the uh, with the devices, which is the least likely one because this takes a long time. We're talking about thousands of devices. The second, uh, which is Israel managed to compromise one of the elements, one of the components of the device through the supply chain and then providing it to the factory, which and most probably they have no idea what, what is inside that device, uh, how the compromise happened. And this compromise, the new device, which is, could, could be attached to the batteries with a little bit of explosives, uh, could be triggered only with a certain message. We've seen this in several of the videos. There was um, a communication incoming and then um, the explosion happened. So there, there was a trigger. That trigger happened in, 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 um, in, in a clandestine fashion way, if I, if I put it that way. And the third scenario is that Israel managed to compromise another piece of the supply chain, which could be the, um, uh, the safety IECs in, in, in these devices or could be a different uh, could be a different model a mod different device of for safety and they managed to um, over uh, uh, load the microprocessor to overcompute which leads to the explosion of the batteries themselves in all the cases um, if there is a compromise in the uh, the the components of the device the shape the case itself uh, if it has been compromised along with any kind of, of compromise within it, mm -hmm. that would shape the project would, would shape it like a projectile. So that what we've seen in, in the injuries of a lot of people in, in Lebanon. Uh, but I think in all those scenarios, and correct me if I'm wrong or if I've misunderstood something, in all those scenarios, the battery of the device is what ultimately is weaponized and turned into an explosive. Is that right? It is the biggest part inside. If, if you if, if you look at the at the pager, if you open the pager, you have the receiver, and you have the microprocessor, and you have uh, the vibrating device, and the biggest chunk inside the pager is the battery. And this is the place where you can hide whatever you would like to hide. You can provide it with half capacity that no one would suspect that the other half is actually explosives. The I'm trying to follow the logic and how this could have worked, right? How this could have happened. Uh, you said theory number one, working theory number one, is Israel get their hand on the pagers before they're delivered to Hezbollah, and that's where they could tamper with them. You said that's the least likely. Why? Because it takes a lot of work, and this is not clandestine. Um, if you would, if if you get um, a shipment of thousands of devices that you would like to. Um, well, uh, get hold on, work on them, and then ship them again. It's very suspicious, and um, the 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 the, pl the plausibility, the it's um, it's it's the core of the clandestine and um, uh, operations. It's that you have to do something that no one suspects, and you don't disrupt the chain. Mm. So if you don't disrupt the chain and you let it go as it is supposed to go then you are then it's it's mission mission accomplished for you and i think uh, and this is why the scenario of the uh, compromise within the supply chain within the battery manufacturer and and then being provided to whoever has the law bought these devices from and this completes the chain and the trigger is now in tel aviv and whatever the message that they coded uh, they could be they could be multi-layered um, um, here, uh, uh, we're talking about it could be a multi-layered interception and compromise of, 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 of components. Could be the batteries, where could be half of it explosives. It could be also the microchip that uh, that responds to a certain command that comes through telecommunications, either uh, a call um, as a paper or as a message. So, what does this security breach mean for Hezbollah now? 
Well, joining me now from Beirut is the author and journalist Kim Ratas. Uh, Kim, it's great to have you back on the program. Just describe to us, if you can, the panic, the feeling in Beirut at 3.30 this afternoon when those pages exploded one after another. I'm afraid the connection is a bit uh, is a bit uh, unstable, mm. so I missed the question. But I think you're asking me about the mood mm. in uh, Beirut this afternoon, which was just one of chaos and absolute uh, mayhem from 3:30 onwards for the last few hours. Um, you could just imagine that these pagers were going off across the country, uh, mostly in Beirut, but also in the south and in the Bekaa, and actually also in Syria. And these uh, small explosions are uh, going off in grocery shops uh, next to you on a moped, uh, somebody, you know, driving next to you, just going off everywhere. And then the wailing of sirens throughout the afternoon, hospitals overwhelmed everywhere. Um, it was absolute chaos and, and mayhem and, and fear because people didn't instantly understand mm. what was going on. On. It was one explosion and then another, and then it was generalized across the country. People were afraid if they were carrying a pager or a phone um, that, you know, it might happen to, to them because as targeted as, as this was, and we assume it was an Israeli targeted operation against Hezbollah operatives, you could be standing next to somebody. It's mm. not perfect technology. Doctors use pagers in this country. So there have been uh, most likely civilians uh, injured right. um, as well. And now, of course, the Lebanese are wondering, you know, what, what next and what does this mean? Which mm. I assume are the questions you want to ask me too. Uh, indeed, I was going to get on to that. But I mean, just to say the Israelis have so far said nothing. Uh, let's see what they say, if they say anything at all further down the line. But I mean, what is the kind of guesswork about how they, whoever did this, how they managed to do this? I'm not a technical expert. There are a lot of speculations. I'm not a pager um, expert. What we do know is that Hezbollah tried to ditch uh, more high-tech communication methods because they were being targeted for assassination. So Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, gave instructions to stop using your WhatsApp mes uh, messaging app, your iPhones, disconnect your CCTVs because the enemy, uh, Israel, he said, is going into your homes yeah. and, and finding out where you are, what you're doing, and, and at what time. So they opted for a more low-tech technology, pagers. And as far as we understand, this was a new batch of pagers they'd gotten into the country just a few months ago. Right. How exactly these were detonated? Were they rigged in advance? Um, can you make a pager explode via high-frequency interference? and you know ignite the battery i'm just not enough of an expert okay. and i think the investigation uh, in lebanon will take its course as well and now to the most important question kim you know hezbollah and the israeli government have been sort of you know exchanging artillery and insults and threats all year long since october the 7th is this the trigger that could ignite the wider war you know we keep waiting for that trigger and one way one day it will come i don't know whether this is the one uh, I've been saying for some months now that Iran and Hezbollah uh, partners, uh, allies, don't want a wider regional war. Israel has clearly understood that. And it has been pushing the limits of what it can do, uh, targeting Iranian assets in Syria, targeting Hezbollah operatives in Lebanon, killing Hezbollah leader in, um, in August, um, killing Hamas leader in Tehran, um, as well as Ismail Haniyeh, and finding out that the fire it receives in return is still contained. I know that's not what it feels mm. like for residents of northern Israel, but Hezbollah and Iran's responses have been fairly pragmatic and restrained and very often choreographed and telegraphed in advance. But what's happening here is what I call a game of Middle East roulette. You keep trying and pushing and pushing. Mm. And at one point, you push too far and you do ignite a regional conflagration, right. which the Biden administration has warned Israel repeatedly um, not to do. Mm. What Hezbollah does now and what Israel's intentions were, we'll mm. find out over the next 48 okay. hours. Did right. Israel think that it could, um, you know, do a, f a final sort of, you know, devastating blow for um, against, um, against Hezbollah? Or is this a prelude mm. to a large scale military operation okay. against Lebanon while Hezbollah is dealing with the aftermath of this chaos. Okay. 
it means a lot actually because this is not the first um, in in and we are almost a year. Uh, it's not the first one. We've seen it with the mobile devices that even um, the the Secretary General of, of Hezbollah, Hazar Nasrallah, had to appeal to his fighters not to use the mobile phones first. And we've seen it with um, another example. It was with the assassination of Ad Shukur in in Beirut, where um, some of the scenarios that have been pushed by Western media that there was a call for him to go up, uh, and there, this is where the assassination happened. So it's it's a multi layered um, problem for Hezbollah. It's a problem mainly with communication, and they cannot change much now during the war because anything that are going to change, they will be on the, the scope and Israel would notice that and they cannot go for large shipments to replace what they have. It's very critical, mm. it's very critical now as Israel declared that they are going full force. Hamza Attar, defense and intelligence researcher, joining us from Luxembourg this hour. Thank you so much for Notice the common sentiment was uh, within them videos when they were asked about these particular questions was that Lebanon and uh, Iran does not want a regional widespread war. But Israel is pressing buttons to see how far they could push them, right? So they're trying to provoke this war. Kind of like uh, America in the uh, UK and uh, Ukraine, let's just say Ukraine, kind of like what the countries that's helping Ukraine along with Ukraine are doing to Russia. They're trying to push Russia into a box to force Russia to have to use nukes or something. But I wanted to go into this because this talks about the country they're really trying to uh, target, that they're really trying to provoke, which we know is Iran or Persia or the Mades, right? So let's go into this. This is Isaiah 13. We're going to read 17 through 22. It says, Behold, I will stir up the Mades against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls also shall dash the young man to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall a Arabian pitch a tent there, Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satires shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in there, and I obviously didn't get that last part, I'm sorry about that, but uh... One of the things I wanted to touch on on this is because we'll see they're provoking Iran. And once Iran is provoked, they're not going to have mercy like the Bible says. They, they're going to they're not going to spare the womb. They're not going to care about the elderly. They're, they're taking it out on everybody. Right. But think about this. All these people. Right. OK, this is not the final number. Right. But this is the last updated number that I seen. It was like twenty nine hundred and some change people that were injured from this nine dead right so when you trigger uh pagers to explode thinking that well i'm not triggering cell phones so it won't get most of their population in this particular groups they are these particular groups they operate with pagers so let's target them like they did you understand that there's more people who use pagers in those countries like doctors and business owners and different people like that than just the Hezbollah network. So what's so crazy is it affected more people. There were civilians that got injured and everything else. It wasn't just, there was a, a one of the people who, who passed away was a little girl, a little girl, a young little girl passed away. So uh, uh, Pedro uh, exploded in her house and took her life. So when we talk about these things, it's not like they say it was targeted, but if they just targeted certain people, it would be one thing. No, they, they pretty much targeted all these people who had pagers. Rather, not they were the enemy. Rather, they were the enemy or not. So you think that when you provoke this nation like they provoke in Iran, and that's why the Bible says this, you provoke the Mades, you provoke Persia, right? 
and they get now they're angry now they're ready to fight and they get the upper hand in any type of fighting situation when you spared no cause for them when you bombed their consulate when you sent uh, uh planted bombs to kill other people's leaders in their countries when you set uh uh hacked cell phones or or uh pagers to explode on people you know and created mass destruction in their countries so with all that mass destruction you think that they gonna spare you think that they, their bows or their missiles aren't going to dash the young man into pieces? You think that they're going to have pity on the womb? You think that their eyes is going to spare children? They're not going to care who they targeting. Because when we have done things to them and it affected them, it didn't just affect a particular group. It was widespread. It affected civilians. It affected babies. Like we watching what's going on between uh, uh, Israel and Gaza. That's that's hurting babies. Little babies are passing away. They're not existing anymore. Right. Elderly people, pregnant people. So you think that once they are riled up to come back and attack back, once God put that spirit on them to let them know it's their time to fulfill their part in prophecy, they will not care. So understand that. And you got people who would probably be like, well, who is Iran? They can't do anything. They don't have nothing. They're dumb people. They don't have a real military. They couldn't fight nobody. Let me tell you, we are overcompensating. We are overthinking our power. We're over uh, rating our ability to do things. Like, Do you know that we haven't even created hypersonic missiles yet as a country? I'm kind of disappointed in that, to be honest. But Iran has. You understand Russia has. So they have technology we don't. So there's no way that we could call them stupid or unsmart or anything like that to think that they're lesser than and they couldn't do anything. So and this is Bible prophecy. This has to happen. And I'm not saying this to scare people. I'm saying this because people should know that they're pushing towards this. Right. So the elites that run everything, they're pushing towards fulfilling the Bible. Because they get a role in it. You know, they'll be able to reign with the beast for a short time until Christ comes over. On that note, I just want to say Shalom and Barakatha. Until the next time, peace out.